operations, own and manage the strategy. A senior leader, operations leadership, probably part of senior leadership, owns and, uh, and manages the strategy. Integrate and align all the internal and external resources, all the external resources. If you have a healthcare, you have a TPA, come in, all of you do that, I think. You have a TPA come in, help you, align. they have to be aligned with everything else you bring in. All the, all the partners, vendors kill the vendors. There should be no vendors anymore. Just kill them. Because vendors just bring you solutions, their solution, and try to force fit it into your problem. So if they bring that, tell them, well, there's the door. You came in that door, leave by that door. When they come in as partners, partners are the issue. The same vendor can now turn into a partner if they come with ideas, help you design a solution. So you have to integrate all the external, and all the internal partners are all the people that involved with creating the workplace. You have workers' comp issues, you have short-term disability issues, you have fitness centers, you have a medical director, whatever. They all have to be aligned, and here's what we're going to do. Brand and communicate the vision. Communication, communication, communication. We all know that. We don't do it. Engage everyone. Now, now, we, get to, now we get to the people. Now we create the self-leaders that we're trying to get to. So you can do This is easy to do, step by step. The first two steps are the most important, in my opinion. Senior leadership and operations leadership. Because now you get the workplace. So if you do get people to change, they go into a supportive environment. In fact, the supportive environment may help you in recruiting. It may help you in retention. It may help you in giving examples to others. Just those first two pillars, I think, are enough. Probably not enough. So then we go to self-leaders. You create winners. You can't start winning until you create winners. Michigan football has taken a terrible drop in the last couple of years. They thought they could lose some and then try to win, and they can't, can't do it. Hopefully this is the last year of that experiment. Some of us are marshalling support. Create winners. You know, public health and health promotion almost have killed this profession. They must kill this whole deal because, you know, you know pedometers, you know what pedometers are? Oh, you, know, you got the pedometers, you put them on your belt and whatever you put them. And what are you supposed to do with those? Walk 10,000 steps? How many of you believe you can get everyone in your organization to walk 10,000 steps in the next six months every day? Not, not a hand. Failure number one. Health promotion, wellness, says the, and public health says you have to get BMI at 25. How many believe you can get everyone in your organization to get BMI at 25 in the next six months or six years? Since you haven't weighed that since the fourth grade. <laughs> Failure number two. How many of you believe you can get everyone in your organization to control their blood pressure and cholesterol in the next six months? Half of them don't even know it. Failure three. Three failures. We've created losers. We've created failures in this whole country. They've given up on those things. So my suggestion, I like those ideas. I like the goals, but not the way they implemented them. So I say, let's create winners. Take like a pedometer and walk 500 to 1,000 steps a day for the next six months. Everyone do that? You know, 1,000 steps, that's two trips to the car. Let's just don't gain weight. Just don't gain weight for six months. I've seen a lot of programs like that. They're doing better than someone going years. Just don't gain weight. Everyone can do that. Two winners. And the third one is know your blood pressure and cholesterol. And we, everyone can do that. So now we have winners. Now we can say, well, what are we going to do next six months? If I have enough time, I'll tell you a story from Ken Blanchard on that. I'm not sure about time. You got to start with winners. And you got to pay attention. You got to build trust. Help the employees not get worse. Help healthy people stay healthy, and provide improvement maintenance strategies. Create winners one step at a time. And the first step is don't get worse. Don't be in a hurry. Business is very patient sometimes. 
key learnings, create the structure so you can engage everyone. Programs designed to promote self-leadership and resilience. Resilience may be the key word going forward. How fast do you get out of a problem? If you want to read a good book on that, I didn't even, he didn't even write it for that, but Spencer Johnson's book, Peaks and Valleys, I think that's a good book about resilience. You know, what you do in the peak determines how you'll do in the valley, and how soon you get out of the valley determines how high the peak will be. Until you stop blaming yourself for something and say, what am I going to do next time? You're still in the, you're staying in the valley. As soon as you start thinking about next time, you'll get out. You've got to monitor and measure everything, feed it back into the system. Recognize positive action, reinforce the culture of health. Reinforce the culture of health. Every place, every touch point has to have a yes, a good, and a bad. Well, however you want to, that's probably not the right words. But a healthy choice and a not healthy choice. Or a healthy high performer, not a healthy high performer. Every place has to have both of those. Not just one, not just the healthy choices. That didn't teach anyone anything. You have to have the worst choice. When they make the worst choice, now they know they're making the bad choice. Here's the better choice. You got to teach them. Teach them being the workforce and you're all of us. Reward the champions. Set incentives for healthy choices. Reinforce every touch, every touch point. And if you get the community involved, every restaurant, every place in the community, all saying the same thing. What's rewarded is what's sustained. Key learnings from the uh, uh, reward, drive engagement, recognize champions, support behavior practice. Provide at least one good choice every place. If, you, if, you can only, if there's only room for one choice, then provide their good one. Reinforce everyone for making good choices and sustaining participation. The last, last pillar, quality insurance. Outcomes drive strategies. You can't get good outcomes and then let it go. You gotta say, that outcome, how's that gonna reinforce my strategies? So it's a continuous circle. Typical, it's typical Deming stuff. Some of you in business, you, you heard of Deming. You heard of Peter Drucker. A lot of this is focused on that and Ken Blanchard. Those are three leaders that I look to a lot, plus all the ones that support their work. Integrate all resources, measure outcomes, make it sustainable, measures of product. What's the three measures that we're going to give to senior leadership that shows that we're making progress towards that vision? that he or she created, that senior leadership group created. What are three measures are we going to know if we're making progress towards the culture and the environment? What are three measures are we going to know if we're going to making progress towards developing self-leaders? Three measures to reward. Safety learned a long time ago, every place I go in the world, CEOs know three measures or so about safety. That's part of their culture, especially manufacturing. And healthcare, some people in healthcare take up 28 measures, you know. Forget it. They're only taking three, maybe one. You got to get something that you want to like, put it out there and say, this is what I have to measure. This is where I'm going. This is where I'm going to, this is where I'm committed to get. I have the courage to get to that spot. And senior leader will help keep you there. The business case, what's the indicators of sustainability? How do we know if this will, product will be lasting for a long time? You know, a lot of people talk about engagement. When they talk about engagement, they mean how many in the workforce are involved. I think that's way too far down. The first engagement is what's the company engagement? Is the company engaged? And I have four, four levels, do nothing, traditional, comprehensive, and champion company. Here, here's the do nothing strategy uh, for senior leaderships. In, for, the, in the traditional company, the senior leader just comes in and says, this is a very important part of our organization, you people. We can't do it without you. I'll see you next year. They go off and do what he does, and she does. And I don't know what they do. They probably they talk and play golf and have the board meeting, and they, they all go to play golf over in Hawaii someplace. And 